knows me, that's what I'm all about. You know, I've never been one to shout and, and mouth off. You know, to be fair, I just like to get in there and uh, that's where it all counts. At the end of the day, when you get in the ring, that's where it all matters. It doesn't matter how much talking you do now. You know, I'd rather walk the walk than talk the talk. I didn't think I was too vocal, that vocal. I thought, you know, I don't know, interview, I just suggested that. I was asked if I thought how would the fight would go and I thought I'd knock him out. Uh, then, then that got taken as I was gobbing off, but, you know, that's how it is. But, uh, no, it wasn't to rile him, that's what I believe. Everyone's different, everyone's got different makeup. everyone has to do the self up in different ways. He can say what he wants, water if a duck's back to me, to be fair. Uh, if he needs to say what he needs to say to, to G himself up for the fight, and that, then that's, that's his prerogative. Uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm just in, I just can't wait to get in there, to be fair. It's going to be electric, you know, everyone's coming down, it's the talk of the town. You know, Dwayne's always been well followed in the past, I've always had a big following, and uh, I, think that, I think we'll blow the roof off of the place. I know what I need to do, I know that the stars on the night are going to gel. I think it's going to be a fantastic fight. Uh, to be fair, I mean, Birmingham really going to be in for a treat this Saturday night, to be fair, and uh, I'm just really thrilled to be part of this event. I think at 26 now, and coming up, and I'm fairly seasoned, fairly experienced, I think it's really ready now. My time is now for me to step up to the plate and start delivering the, you know, all the promise and potential that people have said I've had for years. Well, the magnificent Lonsdale belt is up for grabs, held by Carl Frotch. It'll cost you six and a half thousand pounds. There's only one trouble with these things, Carl. You can't buy them. You've you got to win them no. in there. That's right. Four defences win you this outright. I've got one myself. I'm a proud owner. And, um, I mean, I've got the WBC title, but I'm, I'm more proud of this belt, believe it or not, because this yeah. is the Lonsdale belt. This means a lot to every, every professional boxer in Britain. I kind of say the other ones are a bit gaudier, they might yep. be a bit bigger, but yep. that is a proper belt, no, must be the best in the so world. so much history to it, and uh, it's the belt, and I'm kind of peed off that it never happened that I got one. I was champion for two and a half <laughs> years, the Board of Control, listen to this, Robert Smith, they promised me, <laughs> way back in Ray Clark's days, they promised me a Lonsdale belt if I if vacated the title, which I did, and they <laughs> never gave it to right. me. Right. Uh, the Lonsdale belt's in the post, Barry, don't worry, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it. Who takes that one away tonight? I mean, it's opinion sharply divided. Yeah, Matthew Macklin, good amateur, good pedigree. I boxed with him on the England squad. Um, very good style. If he boxes and moves, he can outbox Elcock, believe it or not. He can outbox him, but he tends to come forward, he's aggressive, he likes to have a fight. He gets hit with a lot of shots. Am I allowed to sit on the fence? No. Yeah, no, no, no. no. Make a decision. You might as well not bother turning up if you sit on the fence. <laughs> you, you've got to make a decision because I'm going to sit on go, the fence. Go on, who do you go? Just, um, I've, a, got, I've a, got a tip Elcock. Okay. I've got yeah. a tip Elcock to yeah. stop him because, right. because of the way Macklin comes forward. He's, yeah. he's come forward, he's aggressive. He just might walk onto something. Are there gel cocks way as well? How about you, Barry? I think Macklin has the ability to take him out. I think he takes him out if he keeps his boxing together and his a disciplined, tactical approach to it. But that's the big question, is, as Carl says, can he hold his discipline for 12? Tends to get involved, likes to have a tear up, and uh, that happened against Jamie Moore. It may it happen again tonight. If he keeps to his disciplined boxing, he can win. OK. Wayne Elcock is the uh, number one middleweight in the country. He is 35. He is promising to make a mockery of his age tonight. Matt Macklin won bold bid for a British title that ended him with him being carried out on his shield tonight. He's looking to prove, finally, he is the best in the domestic division. Don't move. Elcock, Macklin, for the British middleweight title, is coming right up. ...on the big fight live from the Aston Arena. Birmingham is banging the British middleweight title. Two local fighters, Wayne Elcock and Matt Macklin, looking for more than brummy bragging rights. The Lonsdale belt is at stake. The fighters will be with us very shortly. First, your MC from Chicago, Thomas Triber. This really is the big night for Matthew Macklin. They've called him a nearly man of British boxing. So much potential. Tonight he just has to deliver. The chants of Alcock, Alcock greeting him, reverberating around this arena. Matthew Macklin now training up in Denton, in Ricky Hatton's old gym. Joe Gallagher, his trainer. Alongside him as he makes his way towards the ring, younger brother Seamus, a talented amateur behind him. And here comes...
Franz Macklin. Real division in this auditorium. The two sets of fans, a cracking atmosphere. The Battle of Birmingham. Macklin says that he is fitter than he has been for any fights in his entire career. Could well be that he's going to need to be. Absolutely ripped at yesterday's way, and he's in tremendous shape. The man who took the title by beating Howard Eastman went on to fight for a world title against Arthur Abraham, fell short there. A lot of passionate support here tonight. And he said on the at the way, and he said, I live the life. The subtext to that is suggesting that Matthew Macklin doesn't always. Well, is that going to be a factor? Is it true? Wayne Elcock, though, whatever. A good talker, an engaging character and a proud fighter. The chance of Elcock going up. Shard End versus Soli Hull. Elcock against Macklin, the 35-year-old champion against the 26-year-old challenger. The bookies can't really split them. The experts can't really split them. Little straw poll around ringside, and you get all sorts of different opinions. I've spoken to people who I respect in the game. Some say this guy's going to be too young, too ambitious, too hungry, and others say that Wayne Alcock, who has this Lonsdale belt, just knows too much and has fought at a higher level. It is brought to you by Hennessy Sports in association with Lonsdale, the Sports Cafe Birmingham, and Perfection Model Management and Promotions. It is sanctioned by the British Boxing Board of Control. Steward in charge is Dave Roden. Our timekeeper is Martin Fallon. The three judges assigned scoring on a 10-point must system will be Mark Green, John Keane and Marcus McDonald. When the bell rings, our referee in charge will be Victor Lucklin. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Big Fight Live! Introducing to you first, to my left, the challenger. He's wearing green trunks with gold trim and fighting out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 11 stone, five pounds, 15 ounces. Hailing from Birmingham, his record consists of 23 wins, just two losses, with 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Matthew McLean. wearing blue trunks with silver trim and weighed in at 11 stone, five pounds, three ounces. Hailing from Birmingham, he has a professional record of 19 wins, three defeats, with nine wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the reigning and defending British middleweight champion, Wayne Mentor. Final words of instruction from the Scottish referee, Victor Lachlan. We've had some cracking fights this year already. 
Martin Rogan against Matt Skelton. John Thaxton's European title fight. Now this British middleweight title fight. The champion Wayne Alcock against Matthew Macklin. This could be one to savour, could be one to remember. Physically, not too much to split them. Macklin, although the younger man has had more fights, has Irish parents. Sisters here, his mum and dad as well. And Wayne Alcock, Birmingham through and through, and both of them really popular figures on the fight scene. And you can hear, to those who've paid their money, bragging rights in this city count for an awful lot. Well, I believe the better boxing will probably come from Elcock, but undoubtedly the power has to lie with Macklin. Matt Macklin, who's had trouble making the weight in the past, notably in that, in that uh, British title fight against Jamie Moore. He was winning that fight against Jamie, ran out of gas, and as we know, he suffered in the end a pretty bad defeat. What a fight that was. Yeah, it was one of the great fights, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Superb fight. Fantastic fight. Hence the move up to, to middleweight. He has equally just a harder task in front of him in Elcock. Elcock already boxed for the World Championship against Arthur Abrahams. Unfortunately, come unstuck in that one, but lost a very, very good, very strong champion. Well, Elcock wants a rematch. I think there is a, an argument. I know you, Kelly Pavlik gets the headlines being based in the United States, but there is an argument that Abraham is the best middleweight out there right now. So losing to him, and Elcock was doing pretty well until he lost that fight in the fifth round and took it at uh, fairly short notice after his victory over Howard Eastman. Macklin started fast. Macklin, who's been with Paddy Lynch, the trainer of Wayne Alcock, was with Ricky Happen with Billy Graham for a while, split with him. Followed spells with Buddy McGirt, with Richie Woodall. Oh, that's good from Alcock. Good hand speed from the champion. But the aggression has come for the most part in the opening three minutes from Matthew Macklin. Good opening round. Torino is relentlessly gripping. Utterly Hugh Macklin being told in that corner by his trainer Joe Gallagher that he has the advantage in power. And he says that's one round in the bag. You keep like on like that. You'll be the new champion and you will knock him out. Big call. We'll see. When Alcock in his last fight came through against Darren McDermott. McDermott, very popular around the Wolverhampton way, tall lad. And they were trying to say this week that had that fight not been stopped, McDermott got a bad cut, it was stopped after just two rounds, that Elcock would have knocked him out while I was at that fight. And that certainly wasn't the way I saw it. It wasn't the way I saw it either. But Elcock has already regrouped in this fight as early as the second round, keeping a tighter defence, got clipped with, clip with the right hand in the first round, didn't like it. So what you see is now is he's got his hands up and his chin tucked firmly down into his chest. And pacing himself quite well. But equally, that's what Macklin has to do. Has to pace himself in the more fight. He went off far too quick and paid for it in the last quarter of the fight. That's good from Macklin. Good countering left hand as Elcock came in. Ben Elcock with three defeats on his record. Surprisingly lost to Lawrence Murphy, a fight which was uh, a loss which was reversed, and then lost a British title challenge to Scott Dan. 
Scott Dam from the southwest, real underrated fighter in my in my book. Career cut short by a back injury. So no disgrace in losing that particular contest. And arguably he'd say that he's been a better fighter since then, learned from it. Elkut just seems to be working within himself. It's good from Macklin, letting those punches go, accuracy and the combination to the head. Elkut just waiting a little bit too long, working within himself, just allowing Macklin to get through with the right hands. Really nice, sharp start from Macklin. Good again. Macklin, I was talking to both him and his trainer, he's saying that he's gone back to the boxing skills that served him so well, brought him the ABA title as an amateur. He said that when he was with Billy Graham, maybe he was trying to concentrate too much on power, and maybe just to fight too much like Ricky Hatton. Well, you know, that happens in, in quite a lot of stables. You get a star, then everybody wants to fight like that star in the stable. It doesn't suit everybody. So, yeah, it's what we're seeing from Macklin is a much more controlled aggression. He's trying to box his way in instead of just winging the shots in. Well, he started well in the first round, showed himself to maybe have an edge in power. Elcock not having things his own way. There's a smear of blood around the right eye of Wayne Elcock, and he was taking some classy combinations and shots like that from Matthew Macklin. Matt Macklin, for me, there's an argument that he's taken those opening two rounds. You've got it differently, Duke. I've got first round Elcock, second round Macklin. Already shaping up to be the fight that we hoped it would be. Elcock's much more successful when he pops his jab. Follows that through with the right hand. sustained barrage of punches Macklin was able to unleash sharp accurate powerful and too much for Wayne Ackler, Elcock too young too strong and too fast well I tell you the smart money would have been an Elcock to pull up a points to victory however several people yourself included John said that Macklin would end up being too strong too young and too powerful and that's exactly the way it's turned out well Macklin celebrates his fans respond. He said he sold 600 tickets personally. A triumph for him and a triumph for his trainer as well, Joe Gallagher. Terrific job from him. And the conditioner, Kerry Kays, who's worked in the past with Ricky Hatton, now working with Matthew Macklin, and he said he made the weight so well. And he certainly looks strong and sharp, and he's enjoying his moment, and rightly so. Absolutely milking the applause. Has waited for this night for quite a long time. Now it's come, he's the new British champion. And look at the two-fisted attack I'm talking about. That was a little bit of a shove, but by then it didn't matter. There'd have been a big right hand gone in before then. There's the right hand, John, right behind the ear and the left hook. And at that point there, Wellcock has got nothing left. Referee doing the right thing. And look at how much it means to Matt Macklin. He is British champion. And he moves very much now onto a bigger stage.
We can now go into the ring and get confirmation of a result which represents a sea change for the British middleweight title. Macklin wins. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the official time. 59 seconds of round number three. Our referee in charge, Victor Lachlan, steps in and calls a halt to the bout. Your winner and new British middleweight champion, Matthew Macklin. Macklin confirmed as the new champion and a lovely little moment up there in the ring as he was embraced by the man who was a light middleweight, knocked him out, Jamie Moore. The two of them hugged, and Jamie, who's become a great friend, and look at that as well, chairing Wayne Alcock around the ring. Alcock's been a terrific champion, but tonight, Matthew Macklin, and there's Jamie Moore congratulating him. Tonight, Matthew Macklin was and ladies special. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the British middleweight belt to Matthew Macklin is Dave Sticks the knife into Wayne Alcock and possibly finishes his career. What an explosive finish to that British middleweight title fight. And the Lonsdale belt, that's what he was after, is wrapped around the belt of the new champion. Remember what he said, it is a massive chance for me, and I am going to take it. Take it, he did. We'll have a word with the new champ when you rejoin us. The first couple of rounds by Matt Macklin gave a brilliant display. And Elcock, in the end, those 35-year-old legs betrayed him. And he could take no more. And we have a new champion sitting here alongside us. <laughs> Champ, uh, the biggest grin I've seen for a while. Sum it up what it means to you. That's, been pent, that's frustration been pent in for about... How long have I been pro now? Seven and a half years. I won the ABA's in 2001. I was uh, 18 years old. I was uh, in my last amateur fight. I fought number one in the world. Beat me 12-10. I had two boxed Darren Sutherland twice in amateur, battered him twice. Good fighter, but I beat him comfortably both times. And, uh, you know, when you're, when you're sort of forgotten about and they're moving on to the so-called new superstars and you're not getting action, you're not getting the opportunities and the fights you deserve to showcase your talent. Frustration, frustrating, you know, a couple of losses, a couple of setbacks. But I think everyone will agree that was a pretty spectacular performance. And, uh, you know, I'm now a British champion, I'm very proud. You were always very, very confident that you would do that to, to the champion tonight, despite quite a few doubters around, what, ourselves included, I have to say. We found it very hard to pick a winner beforehand. Well, anyone that knew me well, didn't even think this was like a fight because they know what I'm capable of. You know, I'm very proud to be British champion, but that's not my level. I'm world class. You know, I'm ready for anyone from, say, 10 to number four in the world, number 12 months, to be ready to fight the best and beat the best. You know, I could fight the best now and more than hold my own, but I want to fight the best when I'm ready to beat them. You know, I'm here to become world champion. This is just a stepping stone for me. And I said that this fight would be a case of levels, that Wayne Alcock was a British champion, a fantastic ambassador for Birmingham boxing. Big respect for him. I wish him well in the future. But I said I'm destined for world titles, always have been. And I said it'd be a case of levels, and it was. You pick and mixed your trainers a little bit. What about this fellow sitting alongside you, Joe Gallagher? What has he done to get you in this sort of shape? Well. It's a bit about being happy, you know, I left Billy, I was happy with Billy for, say, four, three years out of the four. You know, the last 12 months I wasn't, didn't have peace of mind. I was coming home from the gym with doubts in my head, is this the best place for me? You know, tried, tried America with Buddy McGirt, come, tried to come home to Birmingham, see if a more settled approach would work. But it wasn't, it, I wasn't happy, I was coming home from the gym and had doubts in my mind with Joe. Joe hasn't taught me anything majorly new, he's just polished what I've already got, you know, made my defence a, a, bit, a bit tighter, you know, and, and I'm happy, and the happy man. Happy fighters are good fighters. And that's what that, that was uh, what it was all about tonight. You seem a very contented sort of fellow. You've got every right to be. But uh, I was reading you had more fights outside of the ring before at one stage in your life. What has boxing done for you as a person? No, 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 no I think that's a bit unfair. You know, I've always been sort of uh, fairly grand. I've always known where I want to go in life. You know, I was, uh, you know, I've always wanted to be world champion. I've always trained hard, made the sacrifices. You know, you can't put an old head on young shoulders. And everyone has a youth, whether it's six months or five years. And I think I'm mature, not just mature physically now, but I'm mature mentally. I know, I know that time flies by. You know, I've got a fantastic team around me now with Joe. I have a fantastic manager in Brian Peters. And we're the best promoter in the world, Frank Warren. And between us all, we're going to the top. Well, listen, uh, you've done the job in great style tonight. I saw a little glint in your eyes when you watched the replay of how the, the fight finished. You really enjoyed that one, didn't yeah. you? Well, I, I, I knew it would be a case of that. It was just, you know, 
knowing it and then going out and executing it. <laughs> two different things. And just finally, uh, blow the trumpet for the city of Birmingham. A huge fight like this for the city of Birmingham. You'd like surely to fight here on your own patch again. Yeah, well, you know, Frank Morris, my promoter, he come here two weeks ago with the Olympians. Frankie Gavin, obviously, on the undercard there. I'm going to be his headline act from now on in this city. And this city Birmingham's going to take over. Brian's been a fantastic uh, ambassador for Birmingham boxing, but I'm going to carry the torch from now on in. OK, just a quick word from you, Joe, at the end. Fantastic performance, punch perfect, couldn't ask for no better. Excellent. Brian Peters, well done as well. Well done, fellas. Top night. Right, let's rejoin Carl Flotchen and...